Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and here is your detailed weather forecast nationwide for March 30th, 2025. A lot to get through today, low pressure systems now exiting New South Wales and Queensland and as such the rainfall beginning to die off over in North Queensland. The rainfall overnight cleared out of southeastern Queensland and now for the most part is clearing out of locations between Rockhampton and Mackay. We do have that strong thunderstorm there just exiting the North Queensland coastline or the southern parts of the North Queensland coastline. That did dump a good del uh, d uh, downpour for the Mackay area over the last couple of hours and especially for locations further south of it and it's going to be leaving in the next couple of hours and taking hopefully the major flooding in the Marion River with it. There's been some really significant flooding, the Pioneer River at Marion, there's been some really significant flooding as a result of this rainfall event across much of Queensland. If you aren't in the loop, we've had major flooding throughout pretty much every river and creek and gully over in southwestern Queensland and moderate to major flooding has been reported across the Proserpine, the Pioneer Rivers and then down towards the Mary River flowing through Gympie as well. So widespread flooding has been reported across Queensland over the last couple of days and it has been really significant that's for sure. Fortunately, there's no more, um, no more rainfall in the immediate forecast. Unfortunately, though, there is a little bit more rainfall as we get out to the longer range forecast. And I don't really want to be the bearer of bad news here and add more woe to some of the farmers, but I'm just going to be reporting what the forecast models have right now. We'll get to the tropical cyclone situation over in Western Australia in just a second. But you can see tropical cyclone Diane now moving inland through the Kimberley region. And this is actually the precursor rainfall to what we're going to be seeing across much of the Northern Territory and into Queensland over the next couple of days. There is still more rainfall to come, unfortunately. And it is actually going to fall across already saturated locations. So let's just jump straight into the forecast details right now. Fortunately, the rainfall isn't going to be as heavy as what we have seen, but still some heavy force can be expected. So moving the forecast rainfall forward out towards Thursday. So this is over the next five days here. You can see some respectable rainfall accumulations expected across North Queensland. A lot of that has already fallen uh, on this forecast modelling here, but we're still expecting a further 100 millimetres up to around 200 millimetres for locations around Mackay or Rockhampton. But we're also going to be seeing from the remnants of Tropical Cyclone Diane through the Northern Territory rainfall accumulations between 50 and 150 millimetres wetter as you get over towards the western half of the state, especially into the southwestern corner of the Northern Territory. But some also some reasonably significant rainfall accumulations through uh, Bullia, Bodori, Windora, Adaval and Quilpie, Wyandra and Charleville as well. Rainfall accumulations out there, it doesn't take much for them to be classified as significant, but somewhere between 25 and 100 millimetres can be expected for some of these locations through Tuesday and Wednesday, which is rainfall that they were not looking for on this forecast at all. Unfortunately, there is just that little bit more rainfall on the forecast, which is going to fill some of the Channel Country rivers, some of those major rivers there that are beyond major flooding and the flooding down there beyond comprehension this morning. And you can see between major forecast modelling as well, there is a little bit more rainfall reciprocated. So let's see what this rainfall is going to be doing, how it's going to be coming in and what we're expecting numbers wise for these locations. So you can see pushing the forecast forward from today onwards for Queensland, a few showers and thunderstorms lingering across North Queensland, especially into the far north Cape York Peninsula, a few showers and thunderstorms, pretty widespread as you get inland, but nothing too heavy, nothing too crazy there and flooding for the most part should begin to recede across North Queensland. Through Monday more showers and thunderstorms expected in the convective cycle later on in the afternoon then through Tuesday we're expecting uh, showers and thunderstorms to become more, more widespread through the Northern Territory and Queensland as a whole especially through Western Queensland as a broad low pressure system begins developing fueled by moisture coming in from the Gulf of Carpentaria and moisture also expected from the, uh, the Coral Sea crossing over in the North Queensland coastline there. We could be seeing some heavy falls along the North Queensland coastline but I'll get to those in just a few moments. So this this rainfall here could be problematic, especially from about Tuesday morning onwards. Widespread showers and thunderstorms expected, with heavy falls possible around Longreach and more heavy rainfall expected between Bedori, Bullia, and then up towards Mount Isa as well. Moderate rainfall expected around the Bedori and the Birdsville area through Tuesday night into Wednesday morning, and then for the most part, this rainfall clearing out as the slow pressure system heads towards the east and then along, uh, along to the southeast through Wednesday morning. Rainfall contracting towards the east of Windora and then towards the east of Longreach as we get through Wednesday morning into Wednesday afternoon, and then rainfall which could be heavy at times through Tuesday night into Wednesday morning, clearing out by Wednesday evening into southeast Queensland and at northeast New South Wales, and then the rainfall for the most part leaving Queensland by Thursday, just remaining along the north Queensland into the tropical zones through Thursday and Friday, but the rainfall there isn't going to be problematic at all. Unfortunately, this rainfall is not what we were looking for on the forecast at all, and I think everybody up in uh, southwestern Queensland can testify to this. Whilst 75 millimetres of rainfall is a worst case scenario, isn't going to make things any worse up in far north Queensland. It's uh, over in southwestern Queensland rather I'm so used to saying far north Queensland for flooding this wet season whilst 75 millimeters of rainfall won't make anything worse for them situation wise it's just going to prolong the uh, time that it's going to take for these river levels to recede and it's just going to add more flooding woes make sure you are in the know on what's going on as well and stay up to date with the latest flood warnings and watches and I imagine a severe weather warning will also be issued for widespread thunderstorms and heavy downpours through Tuesday night into Wednesday morning this will be some short sharp rainfall as well and it will also be pretty sporadic so some locations will completely miss out but 
as a result, we are expecting some reasonably significant increases in water levels over a very short period of time. They will be equally as quick to drop as well. So whilst the flooding situation, it will not, and it probably cannot get any worse than what we are seeing over in southwestern Queensland, it is certainly still time to be uh, very vigilant and remaining very uh, in the know and in the loop of what's going on in terms of how much rainfall is expected in that area. And I'm not saying this forecast to incite panic. I really want people to remain as calm as possible in this, but I'm just reporting what is going to be happening and what we are seeing on the forecast modeling as well. So if you do have time to prepare for this in any way possible, then certainly it is uh, time to start making some preparations, getting some food if you can, and if you're not cut off completely, but I imagine a lot of locations still completely isolated from the rest of Queensland. That's likely to remain the case for the next week or two over there. Anyways, finishing off with southeast, uh, southwestern Queensland now and heading over towards north and north central Queensland, we do have a little bit more rainfall on the forecast up there as well. And as you can see on the 14 day rainfall forecast, some respectable accumulations expected around Mackay and Ogmore. Whilst we do have some rainfall, especially some heavy falls coming through on Tuesday and Wednesday in those locations, sporadic thunderstorms and showers expected throughout the remainder of this week and into early next week as well. So thunderstorms are expected to be widespread across North Queensland, especially further inland out towards Maxwellton and Huendon, as we have talked about. So widespread falls between 50 to 150 millimetres expected in the next week or so. Heavier accumulations are possible in some locations and some places might also completely miss out on the rainfall. It is going to be coming through predominantly in showers and thunderstorms driven by that low pressure. And as such, uh, the rainfall is going to be a little bit more on the unpredictable side. And it's going to be more of a take it as it comes type forecast as opposed to we can be accurately predicting numbers for these locations a week in advance. But just know that the rainfall accumulations could be heavy at times in those locations. And like I said, anywhere between 50 to 150 millimetres possible in the next 10 days up there. Heavy falls are possible for locations between Cairns down to Bowen as well. Like I said, with this low pressure system moving through on Tuesday and Wednesday, whilst it is going to be a pretty quick low pressure system, we could be seeing some lines and bands of showers moving along into the Queensland coastline, streaming in from the Coral Sea. And if we see some northerly or northeasterly winds develop somewhere between Cardwell down towards Bowen, we could be seeing some really significant rainfall, which looks to be most likely through Tuesday night and into Wednesday morning. And whilst rainfall accumulations aren't expected to be too crazy around the Townsville and the Bowen area at this point here, we can't be writing off some uh, sporadic heavy falls and some downpours in some locations which could bring two or three hundred millimeters of rainfall so just the heads up that between monday night especially through tuesday night into wednesday morning rainfall accumulations could be heavier for some locations along the southern parts of the cassidy coast around townsville or down towards bond and into the witch sundays or for all of those locations just mentioned just the heads up we don't exactly know what's expected right now but that is what we can see or make sense of as per this low pressure system and what we're going to be expecting with this low pressure system on the forecast models and down into the southeastern queensland as well and, and into to northeastern New South Wales, some heavy falls expected here and there through Tuesday night and into Wednesday morning, especially for locations such as Thallon, St George, Gunda, Windy, Wollongara, Warwick and Stanthorpe. We could be seeing some widespread heavy falls over a very quick period of time through Wednesday and in towards early Thursday morning, which could lead to rainfall accumulations over a three hour period up to 100 millimetres in these locations. And whilst we don't have uh, flooding occurring in this part of Queensland or New South Wales at this point here, it certainly could kickstart some uh, with these locations being absolutely saturated in the wake of Tropical Cyclone Alfred and the rain that they they've had over the last couple of days. So it certainly is time to remain vigilant and remain on top of the forecast modeling, that's for sure. Pushing the forecast out into the extreme long range as we get out towards uh, mid-April by the looks of things, there's not an awful lot of rainfall on the forecast. It looks like we've still got residual tropical showers and thunderstorms moving in towards southeast uh, Queensland and also up in towards north Queensland as well. So the wet season is not piping down anytime soon, but it looks like we might get a two week lull in activity through the first couple of weeks of April. And then it looks like things tipped by the Madden Julian Oscillation to return through late April and into early May. A very quick resurgence in rainfall is possible across much of Queensland. Apart from interior parts of the state, they will need some much needed time to dry out, that's for sure. But anyways, shifting focus now to tropical cyclones. We have tropical cyclone Diane that made landfall yesterday. I didn't really give it much coverage on the cyclones Oz channel. Uh, I did say that it was going to form a couple of days out, so I believe that we made a pretty good forecast on that. But the Bureau of Meteorology, I mean, they left everybody in the dust. They nailed this system. They hit a home run on tropical cyclone Diane, and they continue continuing to hit home runs on it right now. You can see the rainfall on the southern side of the system here, very heavy. Uh, there's plenty of cloud activity moving through northern parts of the Pilbara as well from this tropical cyclone if the radar and satellite imagery wants to load in here. But yeah, it's been a very wet one as this tropical cyclone is tracked further inland and now as it makes its turn towards the east and its remnant energy begins to track towards the northern territory and then eventually on towards Queensland's uh, southwest. It looks like that rainfall is just going to continue and it's really going to pile on across this part of Western Australia through here. We have rainfall accumulations today 
expect it to be up around that two to 300 millimeter mark. And then rainfall accumulations as we push this forecast forward out towards Monday will start to get a little bit heavier towards the Northern Territory WA border around Kuakara and Docker River. We could be seeing some sporadic falls between 25 and 150 millimeters out there. Certainly some good falls are possible, but nothing like what is expected to happen towards the Southwest of the center right now. Up to 200 millimeters can be expected throughout the remainder of today and uh, isolated falls up to 300 millimeters are also possible. This is extremely remote country of Australia here, uh, north, uh, northern WA and into the Northern Territory, extremely remote and as such rainfall accumulations, not likely to be problematic for any uh, major population center or not going to be problematic for any major population center and not likely to be problematic for pretty much anyone. I'll get to the tropical forecast of the NT and WA as well in just a few moments, but I just want to get out into the southwest Indian Ocean and talk about tropical cyclone Courtney real quick. It has collapsed in on itself overnight. It was a very impressive tropical cyclone. The tips for it to get to Category 5 status, they were always going to be a bit uh, kind of an interesting forecast. It definitely got very close. I mean, take a look at how it looks on the satellite imagery in this frame here. It's very, very close to Category 5 status. That's for sure on the Australian cyclone scale. Uh, and I do believe that very briefly it might have had winds up around that 220 kilometer an hour mark, but it collapsed in on itself last night. And I feel like it didn't hold that intensity for long enough. So I'm not sure if the Bureau of Neology upgraded this to Category 5 strength tropical cyclone status. Uh, but again, I really uh, believe that this system here just fell short very slightly of Category 5 status here. And it doesn't look like we're going to be seeing that elusive Category 5 status anymore from this tropical cyclone. It is now heading over to the graveyard where it is not expected to be problematic anymore for uh, the Bureau of Neology's forecasting team. It was never going to be problem problematic for Western Australia at all, but its remnant energy is going to get dispersed over in the Indian Ocean and as such, no impacts expected for WA or any other location around Australia at all. Up into the Northern Territory, we do have some good rainfall accumulations expected over the next 14 days. You can see 14 day rainfall accumulations across parts of the NT, up around that 200 millimeter mark, touching three or 400 millimeters offshore as well. So the monsoon is still very active up there into the later parts of the wet season. Null and by and Cape West will look to be the wettest of the locations. You can see up around that 300 millimeter mark there over the next 14 days, a lot of that rainfall spread out as well. You can see that there's no real jump in the rainfall accumulations expected, but later on into the forecast period around uh, the second week of April, we could be seeing a bit of a resurgence in moisture up around the Northern Territory and maybe a weak tropical low beginning to develop as well. And you can see this much later on into the forecast period. It looks like a bit of low pressure activity might develop around the 13th or the 14th of April. In line with other forecast models, well, let's have a look. The GFS is calling for a tropical cyclone activity sometime around the 10th to the 15th of April, much later on into the forecast period offshore from Western Australia. That's in line with what the Eastern Wolf is currently calling for right now. And the axis is not quite as far range as such. The axis isn't really calling for anything at this time, but we might be seeing some late season tropical cyclone activity offshore from WA or offshore from the Northern Territory. Still a lot out there for the forecast models to decide uh, and an interesting forecast, that's for sure. We're going to have to be taking a, look, a very close look at it over the next couple of days. Rainfall accumulations also looking respectable across the northern parts of WA as well, which is very good to see at this time of the year. Uh, they have kind of missed out on a wet season as well. The Northern Territory has really missed out on a wet season, but the uh, northern parts of Western Australia as well have struggled for a bit of rainfall this wet season. So the rainfall up there very much welcome, that's for sure. And the rainfall brought along by Tropical Cyclone Diane also very much welcome, that is for sure. We did have a couple of showers and thunderstorms into the southwest corner of Western Australia. And you can see actually a lot of cloud activity uh, over towards parts of the winter wheat belt as well. Plenty of cloud activity out there and there were some good thunderstorms as we saw last night. A little bit of rainfall as well lingering around parts of the wheat belt and especially north of Perth at this time as well this morning. So a good, thunder, a good couple of storms here and there are possible. In terms of showers and thunderstorms expected into the Perth metro area I don't know if we had any last night. Actually I had a really good sleep so I'm not 100% sure if we got rainfall last night but I don't think we did and as such I don't think we're going to be seeing any rainfall anymore. A couple of showers and storms streaming in from the coastline so who knows what they'll do once they get themselves over the Perth metro area but it looks like there could be a chance of showers throughout the remainder of this morning and into early this afternoon still more rainfall expected to be ongoing out into the wheat belt which is very good news indeed for the farmers out there a little bit of rainfall earlier on into the farming season would be very good news so locations such as northern york beverly brookton uh, and even further out inland towards meriden and southern cross a good couple of drops of rainfall out there which has been very good news indeed a little bit more rainfall also expected into the 14 day rainfall forecast as well you can see accumulations there uh, taking the edge off the heat which is 
excellent news. We could be seeing some widespread falls between 10 and 50 millimetres over the next 14 days. In fact, the majority of this rainfall falling uh, much later on into the forecast period here between Monday the 7th and about uh, Friday the 11th of April. The rainfall there looks to be a little bit heavier across the southwest of Western Australia and a good, a good couple of showers still expected to fall throughout the next couple of hours as well throughout parts of the Weedbelt, which will contribute to those rainfall accumulations. But in terms of rainfall forecast for the South Australia, Victoria and parts of Tasmania, there's nothing on the forecast at all in the drought situation over in South Australia and Victoria just continues to get more and more dire as well, especially across the Eyre Peninsula. They're in desperate need of rainfall out there. And you can see as we push this forecast forward right out towards the, uh, the beginning uh, couple of days of April, the drought situation is just encroaching further north. It's really becoming quite problematic for parts of Victoria and South Australia. And this is not the start of the wet season down there that they are looking for, that's for sure. So again, the rainfall, really hoping for some good rainfall over the next couple of weeks just to kick things off over in South Australia and Victoria. Uh, but unfortunately, there's nothing decent on the horizon. You can see here on the forecast modeling over the next 14 days, there's no real good rainfall on the horizon down there, apart from a couple of drops here and there on Kangaroo Island and then to the extreme southeastern corner of South Australia and on the south coast of Victoria. But in terms of decent rainfall, that's going to save them from this drought, a couple of hundred millimeters over the course of two weeks. There's nothing on the forecast, which is very unfortunate. They do desperately need that rainfall, that is for sure. And just flicking things over back to the satellite imagery to round out this video here, we can see just the magnitude of the flooding still unfolding across interior parts of Queensland. Those rivers under the cloud, you can see they are just full beyond belief. They are not changing at all in terms of their river heights as well. And you can see over the past 12 hours, in fact, some of those water levels now beginning to expand as we see those daylight hours, especially around Windora. The rainfall has really topped those rivers up and really caused some significant flooding like you wouldn't believe. And as such, we're seeing these flood water, well, the expanse of this flood water being measured in square kilometers this morning as opposed to acreage. Uh, there's just so much water over in southwestern Queensland and it really is problematic, problematic that's for sure. So my thoughts and feelings are lying with those farmers over that have been dramatically impacted by southwestern west, uh, uh, into southwestern Queensland uh, by this rainfall. It has been significant, that's for sure, a historic flooding event. Uh, and yeah, if, you've got any, um, uh, if you've got any information on what it's like down there, leave it in the comments section down below. Feel free to hit me up over on Messenger. It's just beyond comprehension and I really struggle to make these forecasts knowing the magnitude of damage over in southwestern Queensland. It is just heartbreaking to see, that's for sure, especially for the agricultural communities that do not deserve this type of uh, just bullying by the uh, weather gods over in southwestern Queensland. They do not deserve this. They're the backbone of the nation and they deserve much steadier, calmer rainfall and that unfortunately has not what has been unfolding across southwestern Queensland over the last couple of days. But anyway, so that is all for me for your Sunday morning. Thank you so much for watching the video to this point. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing and also click the join button down below to get access to some exclusive perks. But that is all for me today. A special shout out to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.